Welcome to Electron Online. In the next stage in the development of our solar system was the formation of the protoplanets, the, the bodies that eventually would coalesce into the eight planets we see today. But at first, what it became was just a vast array of probably thousands upon thousands, probably millions, millions of objects, some of the size of a fist, some of the size of a house, some of the size of a mountain, and some of them were beginning to begin to look like big bodies that had sizes of maybe 10, 20, 50, 100 miles across. And of course, there were thousands upon thousands of them, just like the asteroid belt today, but over the entire region of the solar system. And so for thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of years, there were all kinds of collisions. Sometimes the collision resulted in the accretion, meaning a small body would impact in a big body and there would be enough gravitational attraction to keep the two together and slowly build bodies into larger and larger objects. And so that's why these small planetesimals or protoplanets began to form. In other cases, two large objects may collide with such enormous force, and since they're not that big, the gravitational force may not be sufficient that they would simply cream into each other, break each other apart, and smaller pieces would fly in all directions, and so the process kind of took a reversal in those cases. So this would continue, but over time, the eventual result would be that there would be more of the larger and larger objects and fewer of the smaller and smaller objects as they began to be incorporated into the larger ones. So from millions who went to hundreds of thousands, who went to tens of thousands, who went to thousands, who went to hundreds of objects, of course with all the other debris within the solar system, but you can see that slowly over time more and more of these larger objects would begin to appear as they began to absorb, so to speak, or accrete the smaller objects. And what seems to then also happen is that they began to space each other out so that any large object would begin to clean out a region, a path within that emerging solar system because gravitationally it would have enough at attraction to take anything that's close by and pull it in and so slowly grow in size and mass as the time went on. So from having thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands of these larger objects, slowly over time fewer and fewer of them would be there and larger and larger in size and mass. So eventually we would end up with something that we can actually model. And what we've tried to do is we then started a model, for example, assuming that we would end up with maybe a hundred of these large pieces and then see what would happen, taking into account the laws of gravity, and of course the gravitational uh, equation that we got from Newton. And then when we put things together, slowly we can see how our solar system would then eventually emerge. It's really interesting. And then you say, well, maybe what about the gas planets? The gas planets are made out of gas, but it turns out the gas planets are actually built around a core of rock and material. So all this rock that was out there um, swirling around the sun coalesced into either terrestrial planets that had no gas to absorb because the gas got pushed out into the outer region of the solar system. And the outer planets, they did start with a rocky core and then started accumulating more and more gas as they swept up the material that was there due to the emerging increase of the gravitational force they had due to their large masses. So that's how the protoplanets started and then see how those protoplanets then turn into the planetesimals that eventually formed the current planet. So stay tuned and see what happens next.